we see the world around us in three dimensions. But ordinary photography shows us only two. Now you don't have to settle for two-dimensional pictures of a three-dimensional world. Introducing a new dimension in photography. The Nishika N8000 3D camera. Because the world isn't flat. Have you ever heard of Nishika? If you haven't, you're going to learn all about their CD history from fake LCD screens to telemarketing scams. Hi everyone, Azrael Knight here and welcome to TOC Extra, where we take a look at interesting bits of history as they relate to photography. And today I'm going to share with you everything I've discovered about the weird, deceptive and strange history that is Nashika Limited. Stay tuned. Before I get into the history of Nashika Limited and the N8000, I should tell you a bit about the camera if you're unfamiliar. The Nashika N8000 is a 35mm quadra lens 3D camera that originally sold in 1989 for 200 US dollars. In 1989, when you wanted to buy one of these, you wouldn't be able to find it at the shop. In fact, one of the only ways to get one was to hear a knock at your door or by calling a number in an ad that you found in your photography magazine. The company that produced this camera did everything they could to make the N8000 seem like the next stage of evolution in regards to photography. Even though it's a fairly unique concept, it was far from a refined product. The first time I came across one a number of years ago, it turned out to be broken and I wasn't too surprised. Fast forward a couple of years, I find out these cameras are trending for an ungodly amount of money, broken or not. Back in its heyday, this was being promoted as a 3D camera that used regular old 35mm film. It accomplished this by taking four photos at the same time with four separate lenses. You mail in your film and get these cool lenticular 3D prints. If you've ever had a special edition a VHS, DVD or Blu-ray movie with that 3D effect on the cover, then you know what a lenticular print is. Long after Nashika Limited went under, they started resurfacing on eBay for upwards of $500. And you might be asking, how are we supposed to see these 3D images now that we can't mail away for special prints? The answer is by photoshopping them into GIFs. You scan your four images, chop them into individual pieces, align them and convert into a GIF using Timeline in Photoshop. Taking nifty photos is a simple matter of making sure something is in the foreground and background and that the light is good. Being animated and tossing stuff into the air adds to that dimensional effect. I had a working model once and I did my own photos and first impressions on it. You can find a link to that in the description. I ended up selling mine for a pretty penny, no regrets. So why did they go under? This concept seems to have 90s nostalgia written all over it. Let's find out. As far as I can tell from my research, the advertising campaign started in July 1989. This ad in popular photography reads, It's new. It's unique. It's right for everyone, it exclaims. At the bottom, it lists a toll-free number you can call or an address you can mail $5 for an information package that is refundable with your first order. Dealer inquiries invited. The other ad I found actually shows you what the camera looks like. Kinda. This one was published in American Photographer. After 15 years of research, 100 patents worldwide, and $50 million, 3D is here. No glasses or viewers needed. Use standard 35mm film. You won't believe it. To order camera or brochure, call 1-800-blah-blah-blah. Distributor ships available now. If you didn't catch it, these ads are doing two things. Not just selling you the camera, but selling you selling others the camera. That bit of info will be important to remember as we move on with this story. In November 1989, Peter Colonia of Popular Photography wrote a review of the Nashika N8000 with the title, A Born Again Nimslo. The reason for this is that while Nashika had some impressive patents for this quadralens camera, they were purchased from the defunct Nimslo. Technically speaking, the cameras were almost the same and produced the same types of photos which resulted in lenticular prints. What Nishika did was beef up the design and add a bunch of purely cosmetic features to it. It had a metal plate on the bottom to make it heavier, added what looked like an LCD display and molded the top to make it seem like there was a pentaprism inside for the viewfinder. As Colonia puts it, twice as big and half the features. 
The Nashika N8000 was all plastic, had one shutter speed and three aperture settings. It took two AA batteries, its only job was to tell you if the lighting was too low. Of course, all this doesn't mean you don't get a lot for your 199.95, says Colonia. The Nashika is big, including case this 20.5 ouncer stretches a full seven inches across and is nearly four inches deep. Worn around the neck, it feels like a piece of body armor. The article goes on to say that its prints are actually quite neat, but you will find few situations to use it in, suggesting it'll spend more time in the closet than around your neck. And not only that, but you had to mail away for your prints, and the shipping time seemed to be two to three weeks despite the claim of a 72-hour turnaround. In the US, of course. Though Colonia admitted, the 3D effects possible with the Nashika are terrific. If you read this review in 1989 and still wanted one, it wasn't easy. Waiting for a knock at your door, or calling the 1-800 number seemed to be the only way to get one. These were not sold in stores. As much as the review praised the prints, it tore a strip off the design and who can blame them? Everything they did to upgrade from the Nimslow was designed to make you think you were getting more camera than you were, and an amateur photographer wouldn't notice most of it until it was too late. Well, the mixed review would not go unnoticed. The hate mail poured in. Here's one example published a few months later in February 1990 titled, Nashika, nasty or nice. What difference does it make whether the camera is a black box or a one-eyed space-age robot that speaks 10 languages to tell you when you're overexposing? For a camera that produces beautiful, unique, and deep pictures and costs $50 million and 15 years of research to develop, a price tag of $200 is a bargain indeed. The angry reader also says, Lesson in logic. The function of a camera is to produce beautiful photographs. Anything else you say about a camera is irrelevant. The angry writer also seems to brag about the three f-stops that can be used in various lighting situations. Man, it really seems like this guy is invested in Nishika. Oh wait, he is. The letter was signed by an American 3D independent distributor. Popular Photography made no apologies for the review, saying the staff were somewhat divided on the quality of the prints, but conceded that some people liked it. However, the Nashika is larger and heavier than it needs to be and is festooned with many mock features. And to reiterate, some of these fake features include a fake LCD screen that is just a distance scale, a grip that implies a motor drive, a prism at the top to imply a pentaprism viewfinder, a metal plate to give it heft. This sticker right here is designed to look like the JC2 past sticker. Not only that, but if you'll notice, the initials are JBDF, which are the same initials as the two owners of the four companies involved in making the N8000. Jim Bainbridge and Daniel Fingerette. And two out of three contacts on the hot shoe were also fake. Popular Photography says the Nimslow, the camera which many of these patents were purchased from, was a superior model with a workable auto exposure system and called the Nashika a glorified box camera. Popular photography really took the gloves off on this guy. They continue with, who spent 50 million and 15 years of research to develop the system? Certainly not Nashika or its pyramid style distributors. We think the clear light of your logic is somewhat compromised by your being an American independent distributor. In the same issue, an ex-Nimslow employee also wrote in to express their distaste. As an ex-Nimslow employee who maintained his communications network with his former colleagues and had an awareness of Nessay Corporation's efforts to resurrect the Nimslow 3D system, I eagerly awaited announcement of the Nessay camera, knowing in advance that it was years late and underwhelming in its capabilities. But I must say that I wasn't fully prepared for the piece of dreck finally announced by popular photography. Yet another reader called the review a vitriolic attack and touted the more than 50,000 distributors of the 35mm Nashika N8000 3D camera. Slams Colonia for not mentioning that the developing technology is American-made and you must adhere to the 6 to 25 foot range for optimum 3D effect, and ends the letter by suggesting that the reviewer must be upset because they were denied a distributorship. Sounds like another Nashika seller trying to turn the letter section into an advertising campaign. Popular Photography responded saying they are pretty sure the reviewer was not trying to be a closet Nashika distributor. The whole thing reads like an internet forum on a rampage, and even the president of Nishika would speak up in the letter section of the May 1990 issue. We at Nishika and America 3D Corporation are pleased with Peter Colonia's praise of what he calls 
the amazing look of the hyperdimensional photographs taken by our N8000 camera. The letter almost reads passive aggressively, taking the few things that were praised, ignoring the legitimate criticisms, and correcting a price issue and the way in which it's distributed. The prices quoted in the article are also inaccurate. For the past three months, our price for developing a 36 exposure roll of film, 18 3D prints, has been one third less expensive than when Colonia developed his photos. What an amazing nitpick by the Nashika president who expected a November 1989 article to predict a price drop that probably occurred after the review. If they received the letter in April, a month before this publication, that still puts the price drop in January, up to two months after the review. He also says popular photography suggests that our independent distributors are door-to-door -door salesmen, but in fact, most of our sales are not made door-to-door. -door. Our more than 60,000 enthusiastic, hardworking distributors use a variety of the most modern and effective direct marketing selling techniques used by such companies as Sprint, Mary Kay Cosmetics, and IBM. I paid close attention to the wording here, and he said most of the sales are not door-to-door -door and that they have over 60,000 distributors. Well, how much do you want to bet that these people had to buy their own cameras up front? Another review was published in Peterson's Photographic. While this review seems a lot more neutral, there are definitely large red flags to be had. Peterson's Photographic reviewer Patrick Christian spends much of the time just going over the features, dimensions, and how the whole process works. As with the now defunct NIMSLO, you load the N8000 with color negative film, depress the shutter button, and Nashika's four lenses go click in unison. Send your film off to Nashika in their prepaid mailer, and you'll get back a set of three and a half by four and a half color 3D prints that don't require a viewer. The brain powered factor is the second aspect of the technology, and according to Nashika president Jim Bainbridge, it's the most critical. The N8000's brain power is a high tech computer printmaking system said to emulate the eye brain coordination of human vision. High tech printers sandwich the four transparent images under a lenticular screen. The underside is coated with a white pigment, and voila, you view prints through hundreds of minuscule rows of optical splitters in the plastic lenticular screen sandwiched to the top of the merged image prints. Through the magic of the lenticular surface, your left eye sees a slightly different view of the lenticular print than your right. Thus, you have a viewerless 3D. Christian admits though, it doesn't match Nimslow's quality. Clearly, this isn't a top of the line point and shoot camera. It's a very specialized, fun bit of business. Christian also elaborates on where to get one, that the distribution is being handled by another Henderson, Nevada company, American 3D, and not to rush to the local camera store because they won't be there. Christian ponders how unusual it is for these to be marketed by a multi-level program like Amway and that Bainbridge prefers the term direct selling and will put you in contact with the closest distributor. At the end of this flat at best review is an editor's note that reads like a prescription medicine warning. Our calls to Nashika and American 3D or Bainbridge fail to turn up a camera to test. Author Christian, a longtime 3D buff, bought his Nashika from a distributor and we were about to scrap the article when a local Nashika distributor, Arlene Shapiro, brought one out of the blue. Arlene's a real go-getter who told us all about the camera, left one to try, and even wanted to sign us up as distributors. For obvious reasons, we had to decline. We weren't overly impressed by the camera itself, but were quite impressed with the outstanding 3D images it produced. And that's what Nishika is really selling. Startling, viewerless 3D images. Despite the small, pictureless ads in photography magazines, one of the more impressive acts of Jim Bainbridge was recruiting celebrity Vincent Price for an instructional slash promotional video. I guess because he was in a 3D movie once, titled Step Into the Third Dimension, this VHS with a runtime of just under 20 minutes gives you a full breakdown of how to properly create 3D photos with the N8000. We see the world around us in three dimensions, but ordinary photography shows us only two. Now you don't have to settle for two-dimensional pictures of a three-dimensional world. Introducing a new dimension in photography, the Nishika N8000 3D camera. Because the world isn't flat.
Uh oh, shots fired to flat earthers. This video was filmed at three sets. Potter's Wax Museum in St. Augustine, Florida, playing off his role in the 1953 classic horror House of Wax, which was presented in 3D, an outdoor setting with a family in Cypress Gardens, Florida, and a birthday party. After an introduction, Hello, I'm Vincent Price. A brief history of 3D and photography. You know, 3D wasn't exactly new when House of Wax was made in 1953. In fact, 3D photography and stereographics first appeared in the 1800s. Many households had a stereoscope. You held them up to your eyes and you saw three-dimensional scenes. Then in the 1950s, 3D became even more popular in movies, some starring yours truly. But all these earlier efforts shared a common problem. You had to use clumsy equipment, awkward viewers or special glasses to see the 3D effect. It wasn't fun and you looked so silly. And a few dry jokes. This remarkable new camera lets you take 3D photos you can enjoy without special glasses or viewers. So real, they're almost alive. Mr. Price shows you how to load the camera with batteries and film. The outdoor scene serves to show how to shoot with the camera outside, and he explains to us how to optimize the 3D effect. At first I wondered why he was so far away shouting at the family. Hello, Robert. Hello, Vincent until I saw the credits and realized he had a stand-in and some of the wide or rear shots probably wasn't even him. What is going to be odd to you immediately is apparently you need to be 15 to 22 feet from your subject. So you have this family man half a mile away taking shots from the bushes like a weirdo. The video does contradict itself a couple of times like here where he says, You just don't want your background too close to your main subject. And try not to pose your subject against a flat, uniform background like a blank wall. If you do, the result will probably be a picture that won't have the depth you want. But later we see him use a camera up against a wall. Also, recommended distances are kind of all over the place in this video. We also learn about the camera's accessories. The Twin Light 3000 electronic flash, the Nishika tripod, the deluxe camera bag, the N8000 camera case, professional camera strap, and lens cleaning kit, and both two and four year extended warranties. The Nishika camera and accessories are available exclusively through your American 3D Corporation independent distributor. And the end credits are an obvious ripoff of Michael Jackson's thriller. The Nishika 3D camera. It will change the way you picture the world. So the promotional material is produced, the ads are published, and the reviews are in. How was the Nishika N8000 received by the public? Not well, actually, because the photos immediately started fading. This time, though, it was not entirely Nishika's fault. In 1988, Jim Bainbridge met with 3M to help formulate an emulsion and what is referred to as a backcoat sauce for the lenticular prints. By mid-1989, 3M had created what they said was an effective and new light-sensitive emulsion that could be used in combination with the backcoat sauce they had developed. Four companies were involved in this partnership. The camera manufacturer, Quadtronics Manufacturing Limited, owned by Daniel Fingeret. Bainbridge owned the other three companies, American 3D Limited, which was the distributor, the print designer, Lentech Corporation, and the printer, Nashika Limited. 40 million was invested into the system and over 1 million of that involved the purchase of the backcoat sauce and new emulsion. Over 100,000 cameras were sold by the end of 1989, but the photos would start to fade within months. Nishika, not knowing what the issue was, mailed reprints after numerous complaints, but by 1990, the damage was done 
and sales were down significantly. The four companies affected by the print fading, as well as some independent distributors, sued 3M for breach of express and implied warranties. The issue, as it turned out, was the emulsion was not compatible with the backcoat sauce and that caused the images to fade. They also stated that this severely damaged the reputation of the company and its product. The jury found that 3M breached express and implied warranties and that 3M's breach directly caused the harm suffered by each of Nishika's plaintiffs. The trial court overruled 3M's objection based on favorable jury findings. The trial court rendered judgment that the Nishika plaintiffs be awarded just under 30 million plus pre and post judgment interest from 3M. 3M filed for an appeal but could only reverse the pre and post judgment interest. You can recover money but you can't recover a reputation and people weren't buying nearly as many cameras. The N8000 and the lesser known more compact N9000 were collecting dust and around this time Nashika was already working to recover their losses, though not in the most honest way. Nashika and its companies initiated a telemarketing campaign where they convinced their callers that they had won a substantial prize ranging from cash to a brand new car. But in order to claim it, the winner needed to pay a one-time fee of $700. The so-called award winner almost always received a camera and or travel voucher that contained a number of additional costs and restrictions, making it nearly impossible to use. Kiplinger's Personal Finance Magazine did their own investigation and published their findings in their July 1992 issue. In March 1992, a Conroe, Texas company, MC Inc., mailed MRG coded certificates claiming, You're guaranteed at least one of the five items below for your participation in our national promotion. One of those certificates arrived at the home of Kiplinger's Personal Finance Magazine staffer while we were working on this story. The prizes were a 1992 Chrysler LeBaron or $10,000 cash, $4,000 cash, two round trip airfares to Orlando or Las Vegas, $1,000 cash, and a Sony 27 inch high resolution color TV. When we called MC Inc, we were told that we had to buy a Nashika 3D camera and some jewelry for $498 to qualify for a prize. Our staffer hung up. They made hundreds of thousands of calls and who knows how many mail outs, but eventually the law caught up to them and they were forced to pay back 11.3 million to those victimized by the campaign. This left Nashika and Jim Bainbridge bankrupt. On March 19, 1996, the Las Vegas Sun wrote, while consumers were led to believe they were winning a car or cash award, most ended up receiving worthless travel certificates, the FTC said. None of the defendants admitted wrongdoing by settling the case. Nashika did not have a listed telephone number and could not be reached for comment. FTC spokeswoman Patricia Hensley of Seattle cautioned that the government still must collect the 11.3 million settlement. Currently, Nashika is involved in another piece of litigation and until that is settled, consumers will not be reimbursed. And there you have it, the weird and sketchy history of Nashika and the N8000. I think it's funny how it's found success decades later without making the original owners a penny in the process. That had to hurt. If you enjoyed this in-depth history and photography, please consider joining me on Patreon. My perks include free darkroom prints, an exclusive series, access to my Discord and more. Head over to patreon.com slash Azrael to learn more. I also sell merch through my website and Teespring, links in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And until next time, Stay classic.
They'll beat us slices. Brigade, brigade, <laughs> Okay, you guys, what's the plan for tonight? 